Hey guys, we are back on Sonic Revolution, and now we got the uh, Sonic Legacy panel going on. Uh, I've got Celeste with us and his team, so I'm going to turn this over to Celeste and let him take over the panel from here. Take it, Celeste. Hey, thank you much. So, hey everyone, this is Celeste Ryan. I am the project leader of one of the writers on the Sonic Legacy webcomic. How's it going? My name is Ninebreaker. I'm the writing editor from issue six onwards, and I'm happy to be here. Uh, Sweet Shadow. I am uh, inking editor and um, admin on Legacy. I, I'm good. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, this is Pauly B from the 303, and this party don't start without me, and I am the music director of Sonic Legacy. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm Cloverleaf Palette. I am an inking editor. Uh, I'm sorry if I sound tired. It's really early in the morning for me. How's everyone? <laughs> hey, guys, it's Catherine Snow. I'm the lead direct uh, i'm the casting director and a voice director for sonic legacy and i also voice sonic's mom alina and i am the web designer hello unfortunately aws off gonna be with us he was originally going to be a part of this but he had to do some last minute things on his end so a quick shout out for that and for those who weren't able to attend the meet and greet earlier uh sonic legacy is an ongoing web comic series it's kind of like a soft reboot of the franchise but it takes elements from across the whole continuities and primarily uses the games as a backbone but spins its own original take on things as well and we're just really excited to be here and show that off to everyone from home. Oh, Off might be able to join us here in a couple minutes. But yeah, I oh, figured cool. we could take a few minutes to talk just about what Legacy is before we go off showing off the content that we've got available here. So like I said, it's like a reboot of the series. Um, for those who have not started reading the comics yet, it starts off with an adaptation of Sonic 1 to just start laying in a little bit of groundwork on who the characters are, a little bit of what to expect as it goes on. All of our issues can be found on our website, which is soniclegacyonline.com. We'll have a link in the text description here for everyone to go to in a little bit. And um, really, I'm just going to let everyone else here talk about their roles a little bit, what all we do on the comic before we show off. So, want to start with the writing process, Nine? Well, where do I even begin? I mean, to start any story, you got to come up with an idea. Um... I think to really grasp like the full scope of what this is, maybe you should reiterate, like I know we already covered this in the meet and greet, but how did Sonic Legacy itself come to uh, life, so to speak? Are oh, you asking me how it came to life? Yeah, I'm asking you. Okay, well, like I mentioned in the meet and greet earlier for those who couldn't attend, all that started off was a non-animation project for Sonic Paradox. I'm one of the admins over there, and there are some art channels there that just had a lot of activity, people just posting still image artwork that was high quality. I'm like, man, it's kind of a bummer that these guys can't really help out on animation projects. So I hit up the wax, and I'm like, hey, let me make a comic project. And he said, okay. Gathered a little bit of world building notes that I had from some abandoned projects in SP, hit up a few connections I had from some online groups, and we just picked it off from there. It's not a, it's not like a competitor to the official comics. In fact, we also promote those. But this really first came out before the IDW comics were announced and released. Sometime after the pre, not pre, the reboot Archie comics ended, and there was a little bit of a dry spell on comic content. Very true. Um, like you said, we're not trying to uh, usurp or upsell or up, sorry, upshow anyone else in the comics realm. This was just our way of adapting ideas, stories, and concepts that either didn't make it, weren't fleshed out enough, or we wanted to see more of. Uh, for Legacy, that's where it all started. Is to is when you write something, you have to you have to shape it, mold it, and everything that comes with it. Um, like you said, it's a reboot, right? Yeah, it's a soft reboot. I mean, it's still going to follow the lore and backbone of all the games, but it's going to try and weave them all together into a more cohesive format, trickle in some things outside of the games like the other comics, cartoons, TV shows, just the extended Sonic media. 
mm-hmm. like we want to have a little bit of a nod to everything there, which is kind of why it's titled Legacy, drawing drawing from the well from every part of it, so to speak. So we've been talking about writing for a little bit. What about the artistic, the music side? I want the others to talk in a little bit on there. Yeah. Oh, well, I'd, I'd be glad to jump in on the music side. Uh, it's it's really a lot of fun, you know. It, it helps me, you know, get to know Sonic Legacy, the lore, and Mobius Legacy, and uh, just taking up uh, all that, taking that all together and making music out of it, depending on, like, the mood. And like what's going on at like the action scenes and it's, it's a lot of fun you know as as a music director not only am i uh writing and remixing music for them uh like i've done a couple remixes like sunset heights uh there's a there's a labyrinth one coming up i can't wait to uh show you guys that and um i'm also taking everybody like we got our guitarist echo neo he's really talented aaron mosquito um um mito fleetway such a such a talented t- uh, team and we're getting together with all of our sound editors and um, all the voice actors and we shape it into like a little kind of cartoon kind of feeling thing and then they animate it and I gotta say I, I'm learning a lot just from uh, form and all that just editing just it's it's quite a trip I'm loving it That could be the music side. What about the voice acting side, Cash? Sometimes it goes hand in hand with it. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I really like working with Polly. We have our own channels in, in our server for voice acting and the music and such, but, you know, we sometimes uh, bounce back and forth between those. Uh, he's, he's just really good. His communication is so good, and I'm, I, just, I just love working with Polly. Um, as far as me being involved, I came in – Gosh, last was it April or May 2020? Somewhere around that. I had auditioned for Alina for the OVA that they were in the early stages of working on. Um, so I went from just talking and being directed by Celeste for Alina to not long after him going, hey, you want to do like the directing, the voice directing? Because I'm really busy. And I was like, what? Because I was still relatively new for voice acting. I didn't really have much confidence. But because he trusted that to me, I was like, yes, I'll, I'll do this. So I went from being like, oh, I wonder if I can do this to being like, I'm the director. Okay. So, so I have a lot more confidence now. What was that, Celeste? You put on the business pants. I kind of did. So I got really confident <laughs> with that. And uh, just about all of the voice actors had already been selected long before I arrived. And I wasn't going to rock that boat because they're really, really great people. Um, so it's very rare, I would say, when a major, like, quote, major role comes up. And honestly, I hope that there wouldn't be openings for those because it's really good when you just have reliable, long-term voice actors. So the way I tend to do things is, um, you know, I just, I just make the uh, – the appointments, I guess you could call for the directing sessions because I insist on directing all the voice actors myself. And it's kind of chill, that process. And uh, when I get all their lines in, I choose the takes I like the most and I sequence and master the audio for them. And then all the musicians with all their amazingness and then our really, really good video producer, they take all that afterwards and they just make something beautiful and sparkly. So um, I'm a little picky. I have pretty high standards about the voice acting and the the gear that you have, the microphones and whatnot, but I understand that this is a fan project as well. Um, I'm not going to tend to sacrifice quality for that, though. I want something to come out that's like everyone is super proud of. So I have to say the voice actors have all been just really good, and our sonic voice actor is just like they are professional. Marcy is just super professional. It's just been so much fun to direct her on her lines. It's just been a pleasure all around. that cash sign. Unfortunately, our pencil editor, Vanessa Sonica, couldn't make this. She had medical appointments, but we do have our two inking editors on the crew, Clover and Sweet Shadow. I was going to have them talk a little bit about the artistic side before we dive into the material. Okay. Um, 
So again. No pressure. Uh, yeah, yeah, no pressure, no pressure. Um, you got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I, I can, I can, I can, I can. Um, oh. So, I Inky, uh, what he No, saw pencils was first. <laughs> no! <laughs> no I mean, both of you have been here long enough. I know, I know. What I was going to say is inking wasn't the first thing I wanted to get into. <laughs> um, what I had wanted to do was to get into pencils, but uh, I, I had many retries uh, in getting into um, Legacy, and then uh, I ended up doing inks, and it, uh, I don't know, I feel, I feel like it's, it looks easy to do inking, but sometimes it's not, because... Um, you have different um, their, their, uh, details and, and... Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. To be honest, you don't want to touch rabbit's pencils. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't mind actually. <laughs> we, if we actually had an option to ink uh, rabbit's pencils, I think it would actually take us longer. But um, I don't know. I would have fun with it. He has a lot he of has details. To <laughs> It's very unique. Uh, when it comes to a rabbit, I kind of think of him like our pretty much our spaz of the team. He has a really, really unique art style, but you guys will have to wait for that as it will be out in a couple issues. Actually, they're showing some... Uh, they're gonna... Yeah, I was going to say, they're going to be showing some uh, previews of uh, some of the uh, issues. But, uh, okay, yeah, it's... that's true. <laughs> It's, uh, we have a really good uh, inking group. Um, they're all communi they, they, they communicate very well. You know, we have uh, we have Ursin. Ur uh, Ursin, Ursin's a mad lass. This <laughs> <laughs> girl can ink really fast, along with she Vanessa. Inks fast. Vanessa. Vanessa also does inking and coloring. And but pencils. Vanessa, <laughs> yeah, Vanessa initially was going to pencil like an entire issue, but she ended up just. Her pencils are so clean, we're like, all right, nope, <laughs> Pass, it passes as inks. <laughs> yes, yes, I think it was issue nine. It was issue nine, she was doing pencils, and then we're like, why are they so clean? This just looks like she inked it. <laughs> it it's At that kind point, of we basically said. decided that they were inks, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, did. Did. we did. We decided on that. Um, we used to have the vintage, vintage Jape. Vintage. Gapes, he yes. was also very good. Retired. What else do we have? Oh, Mr. Zero is also one of our inkers. We have a lot of inkers. Oh. Um, and, uh, we don't we really have We're always anchors. looking for pencils and colors, but I think we're good on inkers for the time being. Yeah, we're, we already have a lot of inkers. What we are looking for are more pencils and colors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we look for everything, really, but from time we to time, you know, when necessary. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, I mean, yeah. and most of us here in this chat are like really the ones that go through the auditions and decide um, what's good enough, what's not good enough. You try again, or welcome to the team. Uh, it's true. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure all of us have gone through auditions. Except for well, everyone, absolutely. Oh yeah, even Honestly, me. Honestly, pretty much just feel free to audition like any role, but we're mostly uh, looking for pencils and colorists uh, for like inkers or writers. Like, if you ever audition, we're gonna keep you on tap. It's not like we're just gonna forget you or anything. Well, like, it has happened before. We just uh, critique as soon as they get it. Like, if there's something that you need to work with, we're gonna let you know what it is and show you how to work it, how to work with it, build off of it. The yeah. editors are yes. very hands on about growth. But yeah, we've talked a little bit about what we do here, and I want to interject real quick. Off was able to make it in there. If you want to say hi real quick, off, uh, what's up? I was I was Hello. actually just um in 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 the text channel. Can can y'all hear me? Yeah. Hear you just fine. Okay, okay, okay. Just making sure. Yeah, I was just posting in the text channel. I'm like, hey, I'm not sure if I should speak up or not because I never got introduced. <laughs> hi, I'm here. I'm all writer late. admin. One times. All right, Absolutely. so I'm going to 
I'm going to go ahead and dive into the material that we want to show off on there. For people who are familiar with the comic, they'll know that issue six was the last one we released, and that was um that's a little bit a while ago. I've kind of hit a dry spell here. So I'm hoping that with everything that we're going to show off on here, we'll show that once we get issue seven out, there's going to be a slew of content. So starting with that, I'm actually going to show off our teaser pages for issue seven. We've got the first four pages here already colored, ready to go. Cash and Snow is going to post um, full resolution versions of them in the text chat for those who can't really see it too well on the screen. Can I go and ahead and I'll start just, that now? Just, yeah, you could go ahead and start okay. doing that. You could just go ahead and slap all four pages in there because I'm going to go them at a little brisk pace here. I will with the, as long as the timers let me. <laughs> oh, yeah, because of the slow mode. So issue seven, we'll just give like a little synopsis of what each issue is going to cover. Issue seven is going to start off the friendship with Sonic and Tails after meeting each other in issue six. They're still, you know, not buddy-buddy yet, but they're getting to know each other, warm up to each other a little bit. The content of issue six is going to be that Chuck needs to get his hands on a supply of Mobium, which is a chaos energy rich min mineral that's found in the world here. And one of the places Tails usually goes to get it would be Mystic Cave. So Sonic and Tails head off there. That way they could just grab a supply thinking it would be an easy haul, but are going to run into a little snag of adventure while they're there. Dun, dun, dun. We like to refer to that as shenanigans. Yeah, we'll go with, we'll go with shenanigans. I cannot English today. It's been one of those days. <laughs> I think all my energy was burnt out at the meet and greet. That was a fun meet and greet. We appreciate you all for being there, too. I fell asleep through it. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm just burning through the pages on here. Um, these pages will be teased on our Twitter account after the panel, so if you weren't able to see them too clearly in the video, you'll be able to once we get those live. Like, everything we're showing off here, we're going to tweet out afterwards. I actually look at some of the work and process, uh, process of some of these pages. So I'm, I'm just now seeing that pan of Sonic spin dashing with the pickaxe, and that's cool. He purposely held off from keeping up on the development in here just so he wouldn't go out and just be like, hey, check out all this cool stuff, because trust me, I've had to hold myself back also. And please note that the pages that we're showing um, have different artists and inkers and colorists that worked on these. Yes, the first four pages on here were colored in by Likey, who retired to work on other things. Once we actually have the issue out, the rest of the shading is going to be done by Spinglix. Should I go ahead with issue eight? Yep, I'm going to go ahead and move on to issue eight. Unfortunately, we did not have all of the flat colors ready here, so we're just going to be showing off the inks at this time. Kind of gives it a little manga-esque tone, just, you know, without the toned coloring. Issue 8 is a little bit different than the others because it isn't necessarily following any kind of game in particular. It's more of its own original story that's just trickled in. And what's going on, basically, in this issue is that Eggman is causing a diversionary tactic so that he could get to the last Chaos Emerald that's on Westside Island, which is inside the Royal Treasury at the Acorn Palace. And his diversionary tactic is carpet bombing the city. Hey, you do whatever works, right? Especially if you're an evil genius. Well, like you said in IDW, yeah. if he wanted to carpet bomb him, he would. If he wanted to, <laughs> but that's if he's just trying to defeat Sonic. Remember, it's a matter of semantics. And there we have <clears throat> Omelette. But yeah, yeah, you guys issue, remember Omelet Robotnik. Issue 7 and 8 <laughs> will also be the first issues where we introduce a fan favorite character, Sally Acorn. She is not the exact same as Archie or Sad AM. Her role in Legacy is if you took all her personality traits and everything, but if she grew up a different route, like if Mobotropolis was never conquered by Robotnik or Eggman back in the past, this is a position that she would be in that kind of timeline. So our outfits to represent that, we wanted to have the royal family kind of have a synergist style. 
So that's why she has more of a military garbage like attire. No, that's not to say that similar. you Yeah, that that's not to say that you won't see the more tomboy esque Sally Acorn that we're used to later on, but this is where she is now. Mm hmm This is just a base. I'm gonna go ahead and move to <laughs> issue nine here. Issue nine all is right. one of the fun issues that I was looking forward to just due to all the action that takes place in it. So with issue nine, we kind of dive back into the Sonic 2 story arc here with going by – wow, I butchered that English there – with Sky Chase and Winged Fortress. So the four teaser pages we have here, it's going to be the Sky Chase segment while the rest of the issue is going to cover Winged Fortress. We have a ship here that is stylized based off of Sonic 4's – I believe it was Episode 2. It was called the Metal Carrier. Uh, I think that's what the official name for it was. Something like that. It's, but instead of Metal Sonic pilot, piloting it, we gave it an AI core, and it's just its own thing. It was supposed, to be, the second, it was supposed to be the second-in-line unit, like Alec was in Issue 5, that was based more off of the – it was Phoenician alphabet, correct? Correct. Because the E yeah. series and Adventure, that was a Greek alphabet. This one's Phoenician, which predates Greek. Fun and fact about issue nine, we we actually had a two week long argument over whether or not we should put a rocket on the tornado. Um <laughs> Celeste said no. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Was arguing about the physics of putting a rocket. That was so large that the bottom wheel couldn't even land on the ground. That was a fun time. We had to actually do a staff vote to see what its fate would be. <laughs> and it and it and it and it was voted no by like what two votes? Yeah, yeah. it was a very uh, mixed tag. <laughs> but we always go with the majority vote in Legacy, even if we don't agree with it. That's yeah, why we're a team. Exactly. <laughs> I absolutely love this issue, especially uh, all the cool things that we see in the second half here. So I can't wait to get these issues out so you can see them in full. Yeah, they're just beautiful. I love the inking. They're amazing, yeah. I think uh, yeah, we may these... have joked about possibly doing a little spinoff that was done manga-esque style, just because we like looking at these inks so much. Whether mm -hmm. or not it happens is a different thing. Okay. So definitely consider it. Ho yeah, hopefully it does come to be. <laughs> yeah, it could be fun. All right, inking is fun. Inking Time for some color is... pages now. Oh, <laughs> issue 10 is a doozy. <laughs> this, oh. is, this is where <laughs> rabbit, rabbit pencils first came in. Yep. Actually, pencils and ink. Oh, Just... yeah, we made it for this. Inks because of the sheer amount of detail he has. Like, a lot of our inkers were just intimidated by it. I... Okay, never mind. <laughs> Rabbit, we were sorry. Clover's a math. We were We were considering making inking rabbits pencils a punishment for our artists, but we decided that you know we didn't want to. We didn't want something that cool to be a punishment. Uh, I don't mind, but <laughs> so with issue, <laughs> with issue ten, this all takes place on the Death Egg in space. A lot of revelations are going to happen in this issue. And a lot of ongoing plot points will actually show their face here. It's not going to be until the second half of the issue where you really get to dive into that, but this issue is just action is, Rabbit had so is, much fun with is it. Is this the issue where we uh, we get to see um, one of my favorite char characters, or is that issue 11? Um, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, everyone loves Mecha Sonic. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's some very uh there's some very subtle plot points in here that I'm not going to elaborate on, but once you get the full issue here, uh some people will be like, "Wait, they're actually that's what Eggman's plan is and it's it's going to be cool." I love what he does with Here's Sonic's quill, the bottom left time. one. Just look at that robot. Because Nine and I both uh, collaborated on the writing for this issue. Like, we had so much fun just picking out the details we wanted on this. So actually seeing this issue come to life is just great. Also, hey, that's Oz's favorite character. Yeah. Mecca's a good boy. <laughs> he is a good boy. 
and then one more issue teasers to show off is going to be issue 11. We have some more uh, thread points that Nine actually created here, revealing. You want to talk about everything here? Well, I'm obviously not going to spoil anything, but suffice to say, uh, I'm sure we all know, like, the Chaos Emeralds themselves have been a contentious point within the fandom at large over the years. Where do they come from? What do they do? Uh, why do they do what they do? Including, like, what limitations or where they came from. And I spent a lot of time brainstorming all of these concepts and more regarding these seven glowing rocks. But, uh, I, not, 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 not to go into it too much, but you'll see more about the Chaos Emeralds than um, you might normally see in any given continuity. And for anyone who has been actively reading Legacy issues, those cloaked figures you may remember also made an appearance in issue 5 in a Vision Sonic had. That's right. You will continue to see little tidbits of these visions as time goes on, because it will lead up the events. I, I will say I did class for these pages, but uh, this was like coloring an adult uh, covering book. Like, because again, that's a detail. <laughs> also, <close laughs> to this issue, Rabbit actually penciled and inked this issue before he started working on 10. He was working backwards. We had someone else on 10, but uh, just got too busy with other things, was focusing on education life. So he took Should over. Should we give that him one. a shout out? Yeah. Yeah, we could give a shout out to Curb. Uh, Curb did some of the concept art for issue 10, like the sterile death egg environments. We have some of that concept art already tweeted on our Twitter. So just be sure to go through the media post. You can check out all that cool stuff. Yeah, I, I remember about um, when the topic came up about um, c flat colors for these issues that Red worked on. And I think Offa said something like, well, I'm interested in helping on flats, but, you know, not to start with yours. I mean, it's, it's kind of intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is intimidated by Red. <laughs> this is true. Except for He's too I. powerful. The most detailed person on the team, and he's also the fastest. Fear him. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's like we mentioned in the we mentioned in the in the meet and greet earlier today. We were we were bragging about him. He was he was working on issue 11 first, and issue 10 became available. And I actually had to convince Celeste to let him do it. Um, I I talked to Celeste in DMs about it because Red was like, "Hey, I'll do 10," and Celeste was like, "Oh, you're already working on issue 11, and you're already doing this, and you're already doing." I messaged Celeste. I'm like, "Look." Dude, let him do issue 10. Let him do it. <laughs> trying to give room for people to have breaks. I want to be considerate. He's yeah, so Celeste was finally like, okay. He, he, he was like, if you can get done with so much of, Elish, of issue 11 first, then we'll let you get started on, on, on issue 10. And it was like a week later, Red comes back and he's like, okay, I got it done. <laughs> yeah, is, and that was uh, like what Vanessa did. Yeah, Vanessa, who wasn't able to make it here, is also sickeningly fast at what she does. So it's actually we have a lot. team that we were able to get as much material ready as possible. And I yes, just hope we have we a lot of fast on. artists. I hope we can keep. This that is what I was saying earlier. We have a lot of people. We've we've got a lot of people working on Legacy that that are like genuinely professional level uh, of ability. And they're all helping work on this comic like for free. Like they're all just volunteering their time and skills to to this fan project. And it's just like, oh my god, you know, these these people are so good. It's crazy. Like I why? Had more to show off <laughs> twelve, but we only had one page ready, and I just didn't want twelve to look so small compared to all of these others. So once we have four pages of twelve, we'll get that teased out when it's time as well. Another thing I wanted to show off here at the panel today, um, for people who are new to Legacy, we were also working on an animated OVA for the Sonic Paradox channel, kind of like a quasi-canon story. Like, it's within the same universe, but it's not necessarily canon to the comic story. And uh, for those who are familiar with Legacy, they've seen characters, little tidbits teased on the Twitter. Oh boy. Well, we wanted to show off one of the scenes. It's still an animatic. This one was done by Piggy Bank, but instead of just doing storyboards, he just wanted to make an animatic out of it. More power to him. 
we have placeholder sound effects and music because it wasn't quite ready for the music development side of things. Once we actually have automation ready to go and synced up is when we'll dive into that. But we're going to go ahead and show off this scene. This is scene 14 out of 18. And kind of just guessing at all the scenes, how long they are. It's probably going to be like a 30-minute OVA once it's completed. The end goal is to have something akin to maybe adventures animation style. The art style in this is not reflective of that. This is just him doing his own style, getting the poses, timing, and everything set up. So without further ado, I am going to hit play. I was going to say, did you hit play? You have no sound? <laughs> okay. Well, there is no sound. I will change the screen to be that window specifically. I had a feeling doing desktop was not going to be able to capture the sound. But doing this, that ought to fix it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and hit play again. We should be good here. Papa? Yes. than light engine? Indeed I do. So, I'll be taking that. Back off and be good little boys and girls. And I promise I won't skewer you today. Yeah, yeah. I'm on the naughty list. But you gotta be drunk on eggnog if you think you're gonna steal Christmas on my watch. Too? Or is it just a me thing? <clears throat> yeah, didn't think so. <laughs> Strange. I don't remember that thing being so fast the last time I saw it. Well, now, aren't we paying attention? I took note of the terrain our encounter would have been on before arriving. And then thoughts lay close to its feet. As well as that with really big rocket boosters on its back. It's all very scientific stuff. Things your pea-brained rodent mind would never understand. And now... I'm gonna destroy you. Tempest, 
Can you throw me at it from behind? Heck yeah, I can. Go get them and kick your sorry butt even better! And that wraps up scene 14 of what we got so far. Okay, you know what? I'm already what? coming up with ideas. Just wait till us musicians that get is, a little bit. That, that is okay. very promising. It just I felt not... so much more alive after Cashlin and Mizumi were able to get the different sound work and placeholder music. Because before, we, we just had the voices in there, and it didn't sound anything like that at that point in time. My gosh. <laughs> Ooh. Well, it it takes a lot. One scene out of 18, so you could definitely tell that it's going to be a longer fan animation project on here. The story is, uh, it's more I'm of a going to, um... Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give out a little bit of tidbit of information right now. The person who did that animatic, uh, Piggy Bank, is, is, is the animator who did that animatic. He actually uh, was was the guest on the Bumblecast today, so y'all can look forward to hearing him uh, talk with Ian Flynn either next Monday or Wednesday. I'm not sure when they plan on releasing that video. Yeah, I do remember That's that Piggy Bank had a spot right. on there. <coughs> but yeah, the OVA, it's a lighthearted story. It's just a little Christmas flick idea that we came up with. Jeez, uh, what was... It was the end of 2018. This thing's actually been in production for a while. We've had several passes on the script. I think it went through three overhauls. We had the initial draft, and then we had uh, some of the other people that I was friends with in SP looked over and like, you know what? This could be a lot better. Did another draft on that, and then me and Nine, we did one final pass on that, and that's the end product that we have that we're working with. So about a total of five writers on this one. The bigger overall story to this OVA is uh, uh, it delves into the nature of Sonic's often forgotten home, Christmas Island, and why it became to be known as that, delving into the history of his hometown, where he's from, and why it's called Christmas Island in the first place. I get it. It's a Christmas episode. Also, Christmas isn't the same as real world Christmas. I'm just going to set that aside real quick. Yeah. <laughs> it has the name. It so is you... not the same holiday. Yeah. So you said you said you said that this uh this this little short this animation is is going to be um is is going to happen within the realm like within the world, but it's not actually canon to the comics itself. Correct. It's it's one of those quasi canon things. Like if someone would asks you would you, you say it canon or uncanon, you just say yes. Would you say it's uncanonically canon? I will not say that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the material that we had to show off. It's just one of those things of, hey, guys, we're definitely alive. We're just taking longer with issue seven because the pincer has a very unique style, and we didn't want someone to fill in and take away from that style. So once issue seven's out, you've got a slew of issues just waiting to be paced out after that. I figured for the last... 20 minutes, we could probably do another Q&A session, kind of ride the clock out on that. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> good. That way, anyone who wasn't good. able to attend the one earlier. Oh, quarter till? Alright, so that's I five minutes. Any... Six minutes. I haven't seen five any minutes of QA so it is. Yeah, I've been keeping my eye on both the panel room text and the Twitch stream. 
And yes. I haven't seen any questions on there, so I guess with the last few minutes on here, if anyone else wanted to share thoughts about the project or about the event here, have at it. Uh, let's. I would like to take a minute and talk about the voice dubs on YouTube. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of it. Uh, a lot of what I do on that side goes into it, and as well as uh, the voice actors and the uh, the people that get the animation uh, panel shifting. Uh, let's see, I think issue three is close to finishing up, if not like halfway through, maybe. Uh, you can catch the first two on the on the YouTube. You can catch the first two episodes, and uh, there will be a lot more coming out, as well as the first episode of Mobius Legacy that will be out real soon. Uh, we are just barely getting started with that on the music side, but a lot of good things have come, and uh, I'm prepared. I'm ready. Yeah, there's also a short series of our debugs that we're dubbing as well, and those. Those are all in production. We're just waiting on some video work on those. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Can't forget about those. <laughs> yeah, so we've got three things on the table right now. Not to also mention uh, the radio dramas called Legacy Uncut that's within the same universe as Legacy and canon to the comics, but it's more the background stuff that you wouldn't necessarily see front and focused in any particular issue. Uh, Nine here's the one that's heading that. He already has one on the Legacy YouTube channel called Broken Pedestal. It takes place farther down the timeline. You should definitely check it out if you get some free time. There is a question now. How long do you plan to keep this series going? There is no end in sight. <laughs> Until it ends. Yeah, it, it, Until yeah, it ends. And when it ends. When that is, <laughs> yeah, no one knows. <laughs> but we're all having fun making it, so as long as there's a passion behind it, it's going to be ongoing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it's not about when it ends. It's about the friends we make along the way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, here's oh, another... Gotta... Yeah, go ahead. I was about to read the same question anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, what... We had a few minutes to answer any other questions. Yeah, this is a this is a classic good one. What got you into the Sonic series that influenced your passion for Sonic Legacy? I was two or three years old. My parents had a Sega Genesis. I see fast blue hedgehog. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's actually simple as that. That's that's actually an ironic question for me to answer. What got me into the Sonic fandom passionately actually was Sonic Legacy. I had just started reading the Archie comics online, getting caught up on them because I wasn't a huge Sonic fan when I was younger. And I actually saw um, art of the OC, the Tempest character, and I assumed that she was an official character because I hadn't finished the comics yet. And I'm like, oh, when's this character going to show up? And some people were like, oh, that's, that's actually a fan character from this fan comic that's out. So I looked him up, joined the server, you know, started talking to some people, and um, it, it wasn't long before Celeste found out that I did some writing stuff. And he's like, hey, you should audition, you know, to be a writer on the project. And I was like, nah, nah, no, I should. Good. And he's like, yeah, no, you should audition. And now almost uh, a little over two years later, here I am. <laughs> I love your audition piece, by the way. No one will know <laughs> for the issues. <laughs> it's true. Oh. Have you, you've, you've actually written it, Polly? Have, have you actually read it? Yeah, I've read it. Oh, yeah, Lord. It was like when you auditioned, it was the talk of the entire server. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody read it. Everyone liked it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can I respond to that, the ultimate voice actor's yes. question? A little, little cheeky there. Okay. Who's your favorite Sonic character and why? You can't really improve perfection. Of course it's Rouge the Bat. Nice. <laughs> she will take any opportunity to voice Rouge. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we are out of time for this panel. It's about 15 till, so I wanted to thank everyone for attending this panel. Like I said, we'll get all the material we've shown off here on our Twitter, probably here within the X hour or two, so I just bid everyone adieu, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Sonic Revolution for tonight and tomorrow. Yes, thank you everybody for joining. It really means a lot to all of us. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. Thank we you. appreciate you. This man, this is this has been like a great opportunity for our group. Exactly. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for coming. Um, 
Okay, Revolution, uh, we're getting close to uh, closing time, but before that, at 6 o'clock, we're going to have the raffle and the co uh, cosplay contest. So stick around because at 6 p.m., which is in 15 minutes, we're going to be hitting that. So stay tuned.